الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآلہ واصحابہ اجمعین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ صدق اللہ و صدق رسوله النبی الكریم و نحن على ذالک لمن الشاہدین والشاکرین والحمد للہ رب العالمین My dear respected sisters in Islam First of all, I would like to pay thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has provided us this opportunity. And also I would like to make a dua for all of you. Life here in America is very busy life. Brothers are busy and sisters are as well. But for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to sacrifice some of our time. That is also a blessing of Allah and we should say Alhamdulillah. Respected sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this beautiful world and He has honored human being by giving them aql. Based on that aql, they are utilizing the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is called tasheer. And based on aql, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them bound to obey His commandments and to follow the teachings of His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is another mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he sent to prophets and messengers to guide us towards Allah. لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ So people may not have any excuse on the day of judgment. If we would have received any messenger, we would have been good guys. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are the messengers and these are the prophets. So you will never have any excuse in this regard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for our guidance, He sent more than 100,000 messengers and prophets. To all of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave sharia, rules and laws. And to some of them, He gave some famous books and all these things are for our own guidance and that guidance is called the sirat mustaqim as you know my respected sisters we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala time and again in each and every prayer of ours ehdina sirat al mustaqim Guide us to the right path. So what is that right path? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by his followers. So he told them, huwa ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. The way of life which is mine and that is the way of life of my sahaba. And this way of life. That is the practical interpretation of the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything which Allah said in holy Quran to do it. And we don't know how to do it. We are looking at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then at the sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That how they were practicing. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He addressed the Sahaba once and he told them, Inna kum maya ishmin kum baadi fasayara ikhtilafan kathira. Those who will be living here in this world after me, 
they will see lot of disputes lot of differences in deen one guy will say one thing another one will pull them towards another what they have to do how they will come to know that this is right and this is wrong so that is very simple what is the practice of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what was the practice of his sahaba rizwanullah alaihim ajma'in that is sirat mustaqim the next point is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with iman iman a father cannot give it to his own son a son cannot give it to his own father i will give you briefly two examples from holy quran one is that of sayyidna nuh alayhi salatu was salam who conveyed the message of allah for 950 years constantly and he got only 80 plus people who accepted his message so he was fed up and he said that rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara o allah i invited my people towards you day and night summa inni da'awtuhum jihara i invited them towards you and called them openly summa inni a'lantu lahum wa asrartu lahum israra then i went to each and every one all alone talking to him in this regard but in the previous ayah he made a complaint falam yazidhum duai illa firara the more i was calling them towards you the more they were running away of me so now enough is enough so he made a dua rabbi la tazar ala al ardh min al kafirin dayara I don't want to see any one of them alive. So Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he ordered the earth and the heaven to pour down its water and there was a big flood happened in the human history. Nuh alayhi salatu was salam at that time he was in his boat or ship his own son Kenan he was a kafir He was standing with kuffar. Nuh alayhi salatu was salam when he saw him. He called him and said, Oh my son, say la ilaha illallah and come to the boat. Otherwise, you will get drowned as these people are. So he said, Sa'awi ila jabal yasimuni min al-ma. He said, Father, don't worry. I will get to the hilltop. it will protect me from that water and flood so nu ali salatu was salam said la asim al yawm min amr allah no one can protect anyone from the amr of allah today illa mar rahim but the one who has the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah says wa hala bainahum al mawj fa kana min al mughraqin then a wave came there in between nuh and kenan and he got drowned now nuh alay salatu was salam when he saw it that he got drowned already so he said to allah in nabni min ahli o allah my son was from my family wa inna wa'daka alhaqq wa anta ahkamul hakimin and you promised me that you can take you are family with you in the ship or in the boat so my son he got drowned wa inna wa'daka alhaq your promise is a true one so why he has not been saved so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him innahu laysa min ahlik he was not from your family now some reservation comes there that how he was not from my family He is born of my own wife so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear innahu amalun ghairu salih only biological relation is not enough ideological relation relation is much more important 
So biologically he is your son. Ideologically he is not your son. He did not follow your footstep. So he got drowned. Now Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he was of the view and he had a keen interest for his son to have iman. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not decree that in his favor. So he died as a kafir. And another story is that of another famous messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told, he told us, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا He was a loyal prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Siddiq is someone who is loyal and, and, and who is truthful in his loyalty. So Allah says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ لِمَ تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبُصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِ عَنْكَ شَيْئًا he said to his father, Oh my dad, why you do worship? Those idols, those asnam and tamasil, they cannot hear, they cannot see, they cannot avail you anything good. Ya abati inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi fattabi'ni ahdika sirat on sabiyya. Follow me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me the knowledge and the guidance. I will put you in the right direction. It will lead you to Allah. Ya abati, la ta'abudi shaitan. Don't follow shaitan and do not worship him. Inna shaitana kana lil rahmani asiyya. He is a total disobedient to Allah. Ya abati inni akhafu an yamassaka azabu min ar-rahman. Fatakuna lil shaitani waliyya. I have a fear that maybe you will have the punishment of Allah. If you will not accept my dawah, you will not accept my call and invitation. Now the father became angry with Ibrahim. And he said, Araghibun anta an alihati ya Ibrahim. You are turning away your face from my gods. If you will not stop, I will stone you to death and get out of my house. So Ibrahim said, That's a astaghfiru laka rabbi innahu ka nabi hafiya. That my lord, he is very nice to me. I will be making a dua to Allah that, O oh Allah, give him Iman. And he was doing that. This maghfira is mustalzim lil Iman. That, O oh Allah, give him Iman and then give him maghfira. Because asking forgiveness for a kafir who died as a kafir, that is haram and that is not allowed. As long as he is alive, you can make dua for any kafir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with the ni'mah of Islam. And that what? When Ibrahim's father passed away and he came to know that he died as, or he is going to die as a kafir and as a disbeliever. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ أَنَّوْ عَدُوٌ لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَأَوَّاهٌ حَلِيمٌ Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam totally disconnected himself from his father. And this is only the muscles of Ibrahim, the faith of Ibrahim, the quwa and power of Ibrahim. That when he saw his father, that he is making partners with Allah, he disconnected himself from his father or in other words, we can say that he sacrificed his father. And when Ibrahim was a father in his old age, and he had a young son, Ismail, in the age of 13 years, which is in such like age, the parents are expecting some help and support from their son. But he saw in his dream that he is slaughtering his son. He told his son that that's actually an indication to me that I should slaughter you. What is your opinion? He said, if al matumar Satajiduni insha Allahu minas sabirin. If Allah wills, I will show patience. Just go ahead and slaughter me. If that is for the good pleasure of Allah. So Ibrahim, he picked up a very sharp knife and he tried to slaughter him. So he did it from his own side. Means these are two very famous relations of human being are in human life. Number one, 
relation with your father, sacrificing that for Allah, relation with your son, sacrificing your son for Allah, and there is a third one, which is the relation of husband towards his wife. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when Ismail was born, he was ordered by Allah, they take them to Mecca and leave them alone in their desert. So he sacrificed his wife with a newborn baby also for the sake of Allah. Only Ibrahim can do that. And that's why Allah said, Innahu kana siddiq an He was very truthful in his loyalty towards Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear respected sisters, my point was that Iman is such a ni'mah only Allah can give it to someone. We are mu'min either by birth or we are mu'min. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us for Islam. Yamunnuna alayka an aslamu. Kulla tamunnu alayya islamakum. Balillahu yamunnu alaykum an hadakum lil iman. Some people came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, oh the messenger of Allah, what is your mission? Because people are against you, they are opposing you, they are teasing your companions, they are torturing you mentally. So Prophet ﷺ told them, Haza sirati mustaqeeman, ad'u ilallah wa anna haza sirati mustaqeeman, fattabi'uhu wa la tattabi'u subul, that I am calling people towards sirati mustaqeem, innama ad'u ilallah, I am calling them towards Allah, I never said anything bad against anybody. Ala basiratin ana wa man ittabaani. Fa subhanallahi wa ma'ana min al-mushrikeen. So they said, O the messenger of Allah, we want to accept your message. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abuduhu wa rasooluh. They said it. As they were newcomers, they were not aware of Islam, that this is a blessing of Allah. That's an ihsan of Allah. That's a mercy of Allah. They were thinking of that this is something like membership in a political party. That we accepted the membership of the party of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to some extent, the leader of the party, he has to be thankful to you that you follow him. President Obama should be thankful to those who voted in his favor. And he is that's why he's writing letter here and there, those who supported him properly. So they were thinking like this. They said to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that your people refused you, but we accepted your message. So we did a great job. Jibreel Amin came that this is the first day and this is the foundation stone. Make it correct and put it in the proper direction. Tell them that you have, done, you have never done any favor to me. But Allah has done favor to you people that he empowered you to say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So Allah says Yamunnuna alayka an aslamu Qul la tamunnu alayya islamakum Balillahu yamunnu alaykum an hadakum lil iman Only Allah has done this favor to you people that he guided you people towards iman. Now look Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself he was very eager and anxious to make all people Muslims. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that is impossible. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ إِلَّا مَرْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ Allah says, as long as the word of Allah is existing, so there will be believers and there will be disbelievers. There will be good people and there will be bad people. There will be this and there will be that. There will be Muslims and there will be non-Muslims. The whole world can never be Muslim. That is not the deen of Allah. That is not the fitrat of Allah. That is not the choice of Allah. Because he has given us the choice to accept Islam or to reject it. So those who accepted Islam, they should say Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given us this tawfiq that we said Alhamdulillah and we, became, we said La ilaha illallah and we became Muslim. So Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. The brothers here, the sisters here, all of them, they have said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Now the third point is, that we said this kalima, 
what are the requirements of this kalima those who came from outside here to america and they got and received citizenship here from american state and american government they had given a pledge of allegiance to the state and to the flag of america this la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah this is a pledge of allegiance we have given to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are citizen for sure they have got certain benefits based on that citizenship the first of all that is the blue passport they got it that he is american but on the other hand the same citizenship brought you lot of duties and responsibilities you are bound to do that you accepted and you have given that pledge of allegiance now you are bound to follow and to obey each and every single law of state or federal government whatever the case may be if you will not follow you will get punished and even though if your crime is very major crime then you can lose your citizenship as well that's something logical that's something reasonable so same is the case of la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah allah says a hasiban nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun do people think or do they do they thought that an yaqulu la ilaha hum la yuftanun that they said la ilaha illallah and the job is done that is the end of story they would not be put to difficulties and to hardship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-janna wa lamma yatikum mathalu alladhina khalaw min qablikum massathum al-basa wa az-zarra wa zulzilu hatta yaqula ar-rasul wal ladhina amanu ma'ahu mata nasrullah ala inna nasrullah qareeb allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you think that you will go to janna and you would not have received the difficulties the like of the previous people they have faced the difficulties in a hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that you would be ruled by certain rulers they will be trying to take you far away from the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala faduru ma'al kitab haysudar so don't go after them go after the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in this regard if you are receiving difficulties so be like the followers of jesus alayhi salatu was salam the followers of sayyidina isa they were burnt and they were killed but they were very much committed to what pledge they had given to prophet isa alayhi salatu was salam so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a hasiban nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun so this kalima or this pledge of allegiance it has lot of requirements and these requirements are known as ahkam rules laws and sharia wahab ibn munabbih radiyallahu ta'ala an he is a tabi'i alim he is a great muhaddis he was actually the hafiz of the previous books of taurat and injil and zabur he was an authentic authority so once his student asked him that sheikh wahab alaysat kalimatu la ilaha illallah miftahul janna this kalima of la ilaha illallah is not a key to janna it will open the main gate or the doors of janna that's the master key so sayyidna wahab ibn munabbi he told them of course it is but ma min miftah illa wa lahu asnan have you ever seen any key having no teeth and it will open the lock so they said no every key has to have some teeth but they said what are the teeth of this key so he said al amal salihah its requirement the farais the wajibat the sunna the mustahabat and also the manhiyat not to do that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma amartukum bihi fatu minhu mastata'tum whatsoever i have commanded you people so do as much as you can wa ma nahaitukum anhu fantahu but whatsoever i have prohibited and forbidden so don't go close to that regarding doing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do as much as you can try to your best but regarding prohibition prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said don't go close to that 
our case is other way around as far as the case of doing is concerned we are not striving hard to practice accordingly regarding prohibition or forbidden things we are making excuses we did it like this because of this we did like brother don't make excuses just admit it that i have done wrong oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i will never do reasoning with you if you will admit your fault you will admit your mistake you will admit your zamb in a hadith it is said sahaba came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that oh the messenger of allah when we are sitting in your sitting or in your gathering so our spiritual level that is very high we are very much satisfied we are totally connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we go out of your gathering and your sitting so we get involved in worldly business and sometime violations take place so we are very much afraid of ourselves that this is not munafaqat that we are in one condition when we are with you when we are out our condition gets changed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says allah created human for this purpose that they will commit sins not purposely it will happen in their life but later on they will blame themselves and they will make a tawbah and repentance to allah and he said that if you are not committing sins and not doing toba allah subhanahu wa taala will take you away and he will bring such like people who will be committing sins and they will be making toba so my dear respected sisters the point is that we are human we have shortcomings we have mistakes we have faults but when you did it now uh, in masjid i was telling the brother that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whenever you did anything wrong so do right after that something good tamhuha so your bad deeds it would be forgiven by allah subhanahu wa taala because allah says innal hasanati yuzhibna sayyiat righteous good deeds it will remove your bad deeds but try not to commit any major sin allah subhanahu wa taala says in tajtanibu kaba'ira ma tunhawna anhu nukaffir ankum sayyi'atikum wa nudkhilkum mudkhalan karima allah subhanahu wa taala says if you will try to avoid major sins so small sins that happen in human life i will erase it i will forgive it i will never ask you for that that why you have done it because your bad record is uh, uh, is been made because of your major sins when you have not committed major sins so that will not go to your record as you know that your uh, i mean uh, car light is not working so the sheriff or the highway patrol will stop you he will give you a ticket but it will not go to your record because that's a minor sin but if you cross over the red light that's a major sin that will go to your record and you will find it for 2 3 year 39 months almost so anyhow my dear respected sister allah subhanahu wa taala says if your light is not working that is minor sin but if you cross over the red light that's a major sin so that will go to your record so but still allah is that rahim that he says if you will make a toba today there is no time limit maybe i will forgive your sin today if you will make a sincere repentance tomorrow it will not go on your record for 39 months but if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will so it will stand there forever and even on the day of judgment but anyhow my dear respected sisters my point was that now kalima of la ilaha illallah it has its own requirements the brothers they have their own responsibilities the sisters they have their own responsibilities even our our marital life why that is disturbed why disputes are going on because neither the brother know their duties and responsibilities nor the sisters and if they know they don't want to perform it in the proper way and to fulfill it in this regard there is the story of two sahaba they are husband and wife abu darda and umm darda radhiyallahu ta'ala anhuma somebody asked umm darda that you are living together as a couple but never any dispute happened between you for all these 30 40 years how how it is possible 
because we are human. So she told them that the very first day, I told the Buddha that we are human. Sometime you will do something, I will not like it. Sometime I will do, you will not like it. But if I will become angry and say something, so please don't respond. If you will become angry and you will say something, I will not respond. So he said, I will try. So I said, gentleman promise? He said, yes, gentleman promise. So we are committed to that word pledge of allegiance. We have given pledge of allegiance to, 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 to each other. So that's why any dispute is not happening between me and him. So anyhow, my dear respected sisters, the point is that as a Muslim, we are bound to know our duties and our responsibilities. For example, we are talking of our rights, but we are not talking of our duties. Those who are not fulfilling their duties, they don't have any rights. Somebody who is not working in a specific company, he does not have any right to go bi-weekly to the office and asking for a paycheck. Oh brother, you have not done any duty, what are you talking about? So duty is prior to rights in Islam. And for that, every person is his own judge. He has to judge his own self, that he has performed his duty or not. Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu ta'ala a famous ruler in the human history, even the non-Muslim call him Umar the Great. The Scandinavian countries, they have implemented the rules given by Umar radiallahu ta'ala We call it welfare. So this welfare was introduced. I think in this area, a lot of people are taking welfare. Some of them, they are taking legally and some other, they are taking illegally. So anyhow, illegal, yes. I, uh, somebody asked me a fatwa. I said, if you are in Pakistan or in Saudi Arabia, and there is any welfare system, and you are taking it there, that's a cheating, illegally you are taking, taking it. That's a cheating, that will be a sin, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. But here in America, you are not as individual. You have been considered or you are considered as an ambassador of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because you are living in a non-Muslim country, you are, each and every single action is counted. And that is considered, and especially after 9-11, they, they have a magnifying glass over the Muslims what they are doing. So if we are cheating, so what they will think about Islam, that this is Islam, this is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who is the utmost pious person in the creature of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he told us that fa ahabbukum ilallah ahsanukum akhlaqan, character, attitude, behavior, manners, dealing, to what extent that is good for a person. He will be that much closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But anyhow, I was referring to this welfare, that this welfare system is introduced in human history for the first time by Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. And that's why still some of the Scandinavian countries, they call their welfare system not welfare system. They call it Umar law. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the point is, that la ilaha illallah, it has its own requirement. And as you know, that family life starts with marriage. New family, that starts with marriage. Sometimes the people here, because we are living in a very free society, but we can say, over free society, or extra free society. So they are making objections to, and we don't have any answer, because we don't know our deen. So they say, oh, how do you marry in Islam? Pushing and forcing? Oh no, that is not the case. The marriage actually in Islam, that is not a merely entertainment. That's a natural requirement. Number one, that's a type of ibadah. And that's why basically marriage is called sunnah. And sunnah is a category of ibadah, like our sunnah prayer. If that was not ibadah, we could not have given it the title of sunnah. Even though sometime marriage is wajib. Wajib, if you will not do that, you are going to commit a sin. Because if the, the, the guy, he, he has been overtaken by his libido, and he is not going to do marriage, maybe he will commit adultery. 
Maybe he will commit fornication or zina. So it means that he ignored a wajib. That's why he is doing wrong things. So wajib is also a category of ibadah. So I was referring to that marriage is ibadah. So ibadah should be in the way of ibadah as ibadah is. So how is our marriage? How is our likeness and unlikeness? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, Arba'um min sunnah al-mursaleen. Four practices are four things are the sunnah of all the messengers. Each and every one of the messenger, they have taught people that this is a type of ibadah. Number one, as-siwak, cleaning your teeth. That is the sunnah of all the prophets. Number two, at-ta'attur, using fragrance and our perfume because that is a type of purity and purification and tahara. That is the practice of every messenger. Number three, al-haya. Sometimes I do mention that in a man, jur'at and bravery should be there, but with haya. And in a woman, haya must be there, but with jur'at. That is thing. Bravery is must for a man. Haya is accompanied with. And haya, are, 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 I mean, bashfulness, that is must for a woman, but supported by the jur'at and by the bravery. So anyhow, Prophet Sallallahu said, number three is haya, and number four is nikah, our marriage. So now when marriage is the sunnah of all the prophets, we should look into the history of the prophets and the practice of the prophet, how they were marrying, how their marriage was. Yes, Islam does not force a boy or girl. Yes, that they will be doing something according to the will and consent of their parents, even though if they do not have one percent choice. That is also not allowed in Islam. But it does not allow a boy and girl to have their own choice without the consent of their parents. Why? That will be a break it towards their family. They will get broken from their own parents, from their own brothers, from their own sisters. So if a boy got a daughter and he lost all his brothers and sisters along with parents, he's a loser or he's a winner? Loser. Yes. Or if a girl, he got a boy, she got a boy and she lost her parents and brother and sister and the whole family. So she's a loser or she's a winner? Loser. So that's why. Islam is a balanced religion. It gives consideration to the love and likeness of boy and girl, but with the consent of the parents or the guardians and family. So anyhow, my dear respected sisters, my point was that now when marriage has taken place, so then both the couple, the husband and wife, they have the duties and they have the rights. The duties of husband, these are known in Islam. His rights are known in Islam. The duties of a woman, that is known in Islam. Rights are known in Islam as well. But certain other things are cultural. And culture as a whole is not a bad thing. When Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came as a messenger of Allah. He saw the people of Peninsula. They were having their own adat, their own rusum and rewaj, their customs and conventions, their own cultural ties and things like that. Prophet Sallallahu did not demolish that totally, but he classified that into three categories. There were customs totally bad, like idol worship that was their culture. That was their custom, because they said, This practice is coming from generation to generation from our forefathers, that we are worshipping the idols, worshipping the asnam and tamasil. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that was a custom totally bad, having no any place and room in Islam. So Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu demolished and abolished that from day one, and he said, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but only Allah. Just break it. What are you doing? And then there are customs which was totally good. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi kept it as it is, like as we are selling our car on as is basis. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he bought it on as is basis. One example of that is like the blood money for someone who got killed by way of mistake, which is called the qatl khata So for qatl khata Prophet Sallallahu asked the people of Peninsula, how you were deciding the matter, or, uh, I mean the decision or the judgment was given. 
So they told him that this is the rules laid down by Abdul Muttalib, your grandfather. He was the chief of that area, the king of that area. That in Qatli Khata, the Qatil, he is bound to give 100 camels to the family of the murdered one or the killed one. So Prophet says, Faizan huwa shariati. Now that is my law as well because Allah approved that. Because there was nothing wrong in that. That was good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked it. And he said, that will be, still that is the law. In Islam, the blood money, that will be evaluated based upon the price of 100 camel. Or let me tell you another thing, or another example. That is the case of Qusama. If a dead body, that is found somewhere in a community. Now, nobody knows who killed him. Now his family would be asked, if you have any uh, mean, uh, complaint against anyone or any claim against anyone. So when they will mention maybe this one, maybe that one, maybe that one, maybe that one, maybe that one, we have some doubt about these guys. So these guys would be brought for investigation and inquiry. They would be investigated thoroughly. If the case is not proven on them that they have killed or they were part of the plot. So now they may not be given any other punishment but still the claim and the complaint is against them. So all together, they will combinedly pay 100 camel to the family because somebody dead, he will not go for free like this. There must be some compensation. Why somebody has been killed and the killer is not known and that's why. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Alayhi says that if the killer of someone is not known and he was killed, so if no one is the killer, then the government itself is bound for that. That is because government is responsible to protect the lives of people. As the government could not, so they have to pay the, from the national exchequer the blood money to the family of the killed one. So anyhow, in this regard, if they have complaint against 50 people, so everyone would be given qasam or half an oath in the name of Allah that I have neither killed him nor I am a part of that conspiracy, and even I do not know who killed him. If the people are less than 50, they are 25 for example, so everyone would be given two times half to complete the number 50, because Prophet ﷺ did it like this, and that was actually the practice coming from the time of Abdul Muttalib. Prophet ﷺ said nothing is bad in this law, so that is as it is, and Allah approved that. But there is a third category, and the third category is partially good and partially bad. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he reformed that bad side of that custom. For example, marriage. They were doing their marriages. But their marriages were like that. That the, the girl did not have any choice. She did not have any right. She was unable to refuse even a proposal. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told them that this is wrong. She is a human. Equal human to a man. If a man has a word, the female also has a word. That's number one. If the male has rights, the female also has rights. So that was a reformation. Now when the marriage is done, so then the rights and duties of both the husband and wife, these are known in hadith. These are known in the book of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala deduced by the fuqaha. If they will perform their duty properly, uh, so then rights automatically they will receive it. But, as I mentioned that cultural things are there. For example, sometime the house is broken or the marital status is broken based on this. That the wife, she hurts somewhere. That wife is not bound to cook the food. Yes, so that is a big problem. She said, I am not bound to cook the food. Yes, that's another thing. If you are working and your wife is working, she came after eight hours and you came out after eight hours. You are tired. And she, she is tired, so you don't have any right to ask her, cook me a cup of tea. Why? She. Her bodily structure is much more weaker than yours. She worked for eight hours, you worked for eight hours. You should go and cook a cup of tea for yourself and for her as well. But if she is at home and you are working, so then that is a mutual bargain. That you are doing that, she is not doing anything else, so she is at home. She is bound to cook and to provide you food and to take care of your... And that what Hafizatul Lil Ghayb means that she may not destroy your property. She may not destroy your belongings. This is one type of destruction. 
For example, if you will cook food at home, so it will cost you $20. But if she is not cooking and you will take her to restaurant and you as well, so then you have to pay $50. <laughs> That's also a type of destruction of your property. Mm -hmm. So why she is doing that? That is something based on deduction. So respected, bro respected brothers and my dear respected sisters, the point is that life that mean compromises. Father and son, they will do compromises. Husband and wife, they will do compromises. Brother and brother, they will do compromises. If we will be fighting for these minute things like this, that life will never go anywhere. The ultimate end is the destruction of the family. And especially when the family is destroyed and there are small children. That is a major sin, the utmost major sin on the day of judgment. Living here in a non-Muslim country, where these kids will go? The wife will take, how the wife will take care of the small kids? Neither only women can do that, nor a man can do that. They need both of them. These are the two wheels of motorcycle. Motorcycle, get those who are doing one wheeling, so they get destroyed. <laughs> yes, that is something logical. One wheeling is very dangerous. So if you are putting your kids on one wheel, so you are destroying them. So that is another thing. So respected the sisters in Islam. Anyhow, my point was, now look, we have not to look at the culture of others. We have to look at the cultures of Muslim ladies. Muslim ladies like whom? Like Sayyida Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Like Sayyida Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Like Sayyida Fatima, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyida Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he married her, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sometime back, he was working for Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. On Muzaraba, he was doing her business and taking care of her business. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa married her, she handed over all her belongings to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That now that is yours, I have nothing to do with. And when Sayyida Khadija passed away, so after a long time, he passed, she passed away there in Mecca. In Medina, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Sayyida Aisha says, whenever I cooked anything good, like meat, or something like that. Prophet ﷺ used to ask me, Aisha, can you put some in a pot along with two, three breads or barley? I want to take it to the family of Khadija. And the family of Khadija actually was the family of her sons from other husband before Rasulullah So Sayyida Aisha says, as you know, that ma girtu ala ahadin I never became jealous of anybody as I was jealous of Khadija. Even though I have never, and that is human nature. Why two wives of the same husband, they are fighting day and night? Because of jealousy. Because of jealousy. So anyhow, that's human nature. So respected sisters in Islam, the point is that Sayyida Aisha, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that what type of woman was Khadija? That after that much long time, you have not forgotten her. Still, you have her sweet memory. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told her Aisha, she was a woman. She was a woman. What type of woman she was? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told her, Saddaqatni hina kathabatni al -qawm. The whole city, they were saying that you are a liar. You are not a messenger. She was the first one. When I came back home, she not only consoled me. When I told her I am a messenger, she said, okay, I am your follower. When I told her that Khadija, the angel of Allah came to me and told me that you will convey the message. So Sayyidah Khadija said, I will accept the message. She is the first Muslim in human history. I mean in the Ummah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Innaha awatni hina taradatni al qawm wa wa sadaqatni hina kazabatni al qawm. When people are running away of me, she was holding me. When people were refusing me, she was accepting me. Wa aatatni malaha kullaha. She handed over all her belongings to me right after marriage. That now that is yours. I am not the owner, now you are the owner. And 
نمبر فور وَرَزَقَنِي اللَّهُ مِنْهَا الْوُلْدُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me all children from Khadija until that time when he was saying Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never got any child from any other woman later on in 60 years of age Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa got one son from my Maria Qibtiya رضي الله تعالى عنها but Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never had any child from any other woman and any other wife of him so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said what how Khadija was when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came after the first wahi he received in the cave of Hira and he was very much afraid because that was the first ever case he was not aware of that what's this what happened to me and the way Jibreel squeezed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says hatta khashitu ala nafsi I was very much afraid of myself that he's going to kill me because the angel and uh, angel and then Jibreel Jibreel is an angel because he used to pick up the big city in one hand of him and throw it down like the, the area of Saddam, the people of Lord, he picked it up close to the heaven and therefrom he threw them. I was visiting that area, it was amazing that oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what a power you have given to that angel. Because when he threw them down, so their dead bodies are crushed and stuck in the mud like you are throwing a stone in the mud and it gets stuck. In excavation, the American people in Dead Sea, they found more than 4,000 dead bodies of them. That, that is, all the bones are crushed. Because the way he threw them on the ground, they got stuck in the mud and they were broken totally. So anyhow, Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, he squeezed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said that that was a fear for me, fear of death. Because the way he squeezed me, I was afraid of my life that he's going to die to, to kill me. So anyhow, my point was, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he came house, he was very much afraid of. Sayyidah Khadija asked him what happened, that this is not a case of sickness, something happened to. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told and related the story. Sayyidah Khadija consoled him, that kalla, walla, la yukhzi kallahu abada, I swear by Allah, Allah will never put you down, Allah will never humiliate you. Why? Because you have the character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us this character. Before message, receiving message, Prophet sallallahu had that, innaka la tasilur rahim. You are taking care of your kith and kin. Here, we are not taking care of your, our own parents. We are not taking care of our own brothers and sisters. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he used to take care of far, far relatives. Innaka la tasilur rahim. Number two, wa tahmilul kal. Somebody who cannot carry himself. Who cannot carry himself. He cannot take care of himself. You are taking care of him, O Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa taqra zayf. You are giving a due hospitality to any guest who comes to you. And number four. Wa tu'inu ala nawaib al-haq. And wa tuqsibu al-mawdum. If somebody is jobless, you are trying to find him a job. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to go here and there. Sadiq, you have any job? One brother is jobless. Fahim, you have any job? to give it to Mr. So-and-so because he is jobless. Prophet وسلم, he was running with people like this before message. Anybody who is on the right side, you take a stand with him and you support him. So now these five characters, if somebody has it, Allah will never put him down. At that time, Khadija was not a Muslim. Prophet وسلم, has not told her yet that I have received a message. The only thing that a stranger came to me and he squeezed me and I'm very much afraid of that next time if I'll go to Kewa Fira, he will kill me. So now these five, and tell, to tell you another important point that how close Abu Bakr was to Rasulullah sallallahu and how he was the true copy of the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he intended to go to Abyssinia and to do Hijra to Abyssinia and to leave Makkah. So Abdullah ibn Daghina he is a kafir, he is not a Muslim. He met him somewhere outside Mecca. So he saw that Abu Bakr is putting some stuff on his head and he is walking. He came to Abu Bakr and a Turid. Where are you going? So he told them that I am leaving Mecca because you people are giving us a tough time. Because of our faith, because of our aqidah. So I am leaving this Mecca. I don't want to live here. I am going to Abyssinia. Abdullah ibn Daghina, he said no. Abu Bakr, whatever the case may be, there will be no Makkah without you. Because cities are known through some people and through the character of some people. 
that you are one of them through whom the Makkah is known all over Arabia. You are a man of noble character. So what he mentioned? He never learnt it from Sayyidah Khadija. But these five were the practices of Abu Bakr in the same sequence and in the same order he mentioned it. Inna ka latasilu rahim wa tahmilu al-kal wa tuksibu al-ma'adum wa taqra al-zayf wa tu'inu ala nawaib al-haq. So you can say that these five characters were the criterion of good people at that time. That those who are doing these five things, so these are the good people. Rasulullah was one of them. Abu Bakr was the second of them. So Sayyidah Khadija, she was a woman. We should not make, yes, some actress from Beverly Hill as our ideal. As we are trying to do it like this, the boys, they are trying to make an actor their ideal. And the girls, they are trying to make the actresses their ideal. Our ideal is Khadija for our sisters. Yes, our ideal is Muhammad for our brothers and sisters both. So, my dear respected uh, sisters, my point was that la ilaha illallah, it has its own requirement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have given different people different features and different structure and different qualities. Even the sons of the same parents, they do not have the same qualities. That's why one becomes a businessman, another one becomes a doctor. A third one is becoming nothing. <laughs> yes, for example, why? Because the qualities are different. Even though they are the full brother from the same parents, the same genes are there, but the qualities are not one and the same. This is, وَلِلَّهِ فِي خَلْقِهِ شُؤُونَ that's why it is called that this world is universe because the khaliq is one and the world is different. The creator is one and the world is different. The individuals are different. So anyhow, when two individuals will not be having the same life qualities, so what about two sinf and two sex or two genders? How they will be having the same qual? No, Allah has given men different qualities. Allah has given women different qualities. There are certain duties only the men can take care of. There are certain duties only the woman can take care of. For example, small kids of two, three years or five years. Yes, the kindergarten. What? Kindergarten. The kindergarten. Everywhere all over the world. Public school, private school, Christian school, Jew school, Hindu school or Muslim school. In kindergarten. You cannot find, yes, exceptions are there, only one exception. But anyhow, he will tell you. But everywhere, the teacher, that will be a lady for kindergarten. They do not take any man for kindergarten because they know, the Christian know that, the Muslim know that, that for small kids, only the woman can take care. Even your own kids, if they are two, three in number, and your wife will leave them alone with you at home, after two hours, they will make you crazy. And you will be crying like a crazy. <laughs> but one single lady, she is taking care of 15 kids, not her own kids, kids of others. As a teacher, she is, because that is the quality Allah has given. So Allah says, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْا مَا فَضَلَ اللَّهُ بِي بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضِ لِلْرِجَالِ نَسِيبُ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبُ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَسِيبُ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبْنَا وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِ That every gender, gender should be content with what quality Allah has given them. So women, they have their own qualities. Now they have qualities, so they have to find out what are their duties as a Muslims. Men, they have their own qualities, they have to find out what are their duties as a Muslim. And then they both should try to perform their duty in the proper way. Life will be as smooth as life in Jannah. If the case is other way around, so you both will be living in hellfire. In this world, and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, he was giving the tafsir of ayah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. The simple meaning, little meaning is, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, give us in this world a good one, and in the akhirah a good one. Sayyidina Ali said, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us in this world a good spouse, and in the akhirah a good spouse. Because if spouse is not good, yes, that's the azab. And spouse can be a woman for man, and a man for woman. So Sayyidina Ali said, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, give us a good spouse here, and a good one in the hereafter. Then he said, Oh Allah, give us nice children here and nice there in the, hell, in the hereafter. Because if you have sons, sometimes we make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him son. Because looking for son. And if that son, he's in drug. Oh. Yes. If that son, he's in gang. What you will do with that son? That son a big azab. You should not have it. But 
We don't know how to make dua even. We are looking for son. We never say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a dindar son. Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salatu wa salam, he was making dua. He said, Rabbana hablana min ladunka zurriyatan. He was not asking for son basically. He was asking zurriya and zurriya include male and female both. Yes. So if you have a girl but she is a pious and nice, so that is much more than ten sons who are in gangs. رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَذُنْكَ زُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبًا إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى So, I think that that is more than enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to follow his commandments. And once again, I would like to make a dua. All those sisters who are here for the sake of Allah and for the good pleasure of Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their families happy, their family life happy. Those who have any sickness, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them shifa kamala. Those who have any difficulties and hardship in their life, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them their needs and necessities. Those who do not have children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with pious and nice children. Those who have it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them pious. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every couple, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah make both of them the lovers of each other from the bottom of their heart and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them tawfiq to understand what Islam says regarding each and every single spouse wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqi muhammadin wa alihi sahbihi